So, full disclosure, my favorite way to play the Steam Deck is in portable mode. Ideally, when I have some downtime and I just want to chill out with a game, I like to do so plop down on the couch where I can just get completely absorbed in games like Sleepy Dogs or Spec Ops The Line and usually play something that's thematically appropriate on my TV in the background while I do so. However, while portable mode is my favorite way to play the Steam Deck, the most common way that I play the Steam Deck is in dock mode, and that's because most of the time when I play, I'm just sampling a variety of games so that I can make content here on the channel, or to just squeeze in a little bit of fun in between different channel activities like responding to comments, working on scripts, or ultimately filming and editing. So true to form, let's start with the basics, and then we'll go ahead and dig into more complex considerations for your Steam Deck while it's nice and cozy in its dock. But for now, that's probably the best place to start, and that would be the physical considerations for your setup. For starters, let's take a look at where your Steam Deck lives while it's in docked mode, for lack of a better term. And I can't cover every conceivable scenario in which you might dock up your Steam Deck, but I figure there are two most common ones that share some configuration options that probably make the most sense to explore, and those would be, one, having it set up at like your desk where you're hooked up to an external monitor and maybe a mouse and keyboard, but generally you're just kind of pulled up right on top of the display. And then the other would be like a living room setup where it might be a little bit further away on a television, but ultimately, again, share a lot of the same considerations that you'd have to think about if you were playing pulled up to a desk. And while both of these do have some more nuanced considerations that are sort of specific to the type of setup that they represent, they also do have some shared considerations that I'd like to go over, including things like placement, cable management, and the peripherals that will serve you best when you try to play in these modes in both of these scenarios. Now when it comes to placement, obviously you want to put it someplace where your Steam Deck can breathe easily so you don't run the risk of overheating or anything like that. But also, specifically to a desktop setup, it is nice to make sure that you have your Steam Deck within easy reach, just in case you ever have to interact with the touchpads, the touchscreen, or just unplug and replug the connection to the dock, just because you have some HDMI wonkiness going on, because that does happen from time to time. And no matter how much of a console-like experience the Steam Deck actually represents, I can assure you, sooner or later you're going to come into something weird, whether it's, you know, just a loader for a game that doesn't recognize your controller's input, or maybe, again, it is just some video signal problem that you're having with the resolution where you need to just unplug it and plug it back in. But whatever it is, I promise it will definitely save you some time and headache to make sure that wherever you place your deck in either scenario, that where it's dock mode is, that you can get to it easily just in case you have to interact with it directly and put the controller down for a second. And when it comes to cable management consideration, everyone's setup is going to be a little bit different, so again, I can't speak to every conceivable scenario, but there are some basic principles of cable management that can go a long way to making sure the experience remains a pleasing one. For starters, Slack is definitely your friend, and that would be true for the power connections and the data connections to the dock. Now, you might do this using an extension cable for the power or just ordering some extra long USB-C or HDMI cables for your video and data connections for any peripherals that you might have. And just from a convenience perspective, this is a really helpful thing to keep in mind because every now and then you might need to reposition your setup either because you got new accessories for it or maybe you just decided to mix up your setup a little bit just visually speaking and when you go to do that it's always nice to make sure that you don't have those cables stretched to their absolute length so it's almost impossible to move the deck around no matter how secure it might feel. And the other reason for this is if you do ever have to reposition your dock or maybe you're just thinking you have to disconnect it for you know, moving it to a different location if you yank that cable and you don't realize that you have no slack available, at best you might cause an accidental disconnect if you're in the middle of a game, or at worst you could end up damaging the cables or the ports that they're connected to, which obviously would be terrible. Beyond making sure you have enough slack in your cables, it can also be helpful to pick some cheap cable management accessories. Personally, I'm a huge fan of Velcro ties, and I tend to bundle all of my power and data cables together for the most part, and then just let them break off whenever they absolutely have to. Aside from just looking tidier, having your cables bundled together, and not so ugly having like five or six cables going off in different directions, functionally speaking, this also provides strain relief for the actual connection points for each cable. If you've got your cables pulled too tightly because you don't have enough slack, or if they're just in a position where something's kind of like pulling it down away from the dock and the back of your setup, then that can actually lead to your connectors wearing out or causing problems with the connection to the ports. Making sure they're bundled together can provide some additional stability to make sure that you have enough strain relief and can prevent this from happening. Now, beyond Velcro dies, I also like to use these little 3M sticky clips, and really, it's a very simple mechanism. It has a 3M sticky pad on one side that affixes to your furniture, and it has like a plastic hinge mechanism that's wide enough to hold a single cable. 
And this was really helpful because if you ever do have to disconnect your cables from your dock and you don't want it to accidentally fall behind your desk or behind your entertainment center if it's a living room setup, then you won't have to get down on your hands and knees and go fishing for that cable and it'll just stay secure where it is without going anywhere. It's a small convenience feature to be sure, but I'll drop links to products like this down in the description below. Although ironically, when it comes to cable management, there is kind of a secondary problem it creates if you keep all of your cables not, like neatly bundled together and then you know just carefully positioned wherever your Steam Deck dock predominantly lives. And that is if you have everything bundled together and it's too tightly in place, then if you ever have to disconnect the dock to take it with you for travel, whether that's to a friend's house for a LAN party or if you're just going on a trip and you want to have it with you, then you have to undo all of the cable management that you just did to get back to those cables. So something else that you might consider doing that I like to do is to keep an extra power cable on hand, extra data cables on hand, and extra HDMI cables on hand, sort of grouped together in a separate location, almost like a travel bundle of cables so that if you do ever have to disconnect the dock, you just have another set of cables, can just disconnect it and be ready to go. And then whenever you get back to the normal location where your dock lives, then you can just put it back and the cable should be right there waiting for you without you having to crawl around behind your desk or behind your entertainment center to reconnect everything that you just spent all of this time carefully organizing. So moving away from the Steam Deck and the dock itself, let's go ahead and talk about accessories for a second. Now, depending on what games you play or even the work you do on your Steam Deck, considering it is a full-blown PC after all, your use case for the Steam Deck and the accessories that you consider to be essential might vary wildly. So if you're somebody who's really into real-time strategy games or MMORPGs on your Steam Deck, then you might consider a dedicated gaming mouse and keyboard to be totally essential. Or if you're somebody who's really into fighting games, then a fight stick might be an integral part of your setup. But regardless of what you consider to be essential, there are a couple of recommendations that I have when it comes to dock mode that might make your life easier, regardless of your specific requirements and essentials. Firstly, I would definitely recommend that you consider their placement as well, and not just the dock. And the reason I say that is because some accessories can interfere with others, whether that's just getting access to them, or in some really weird specific cases, particularly when it comes to wireless accessories, it can cause interference. I actually found this out the hard way just about a year ago when, after I got the 8 bit wireless controller, I thought something was wrong with it because I kept having weird missed inputs and I thought that the controller was broken. As it turns out, I had an external conventional hard drive hooked up to my dock, and that was called causing some interference with the wireless signal from the base for the controller. And as soon as I unplug this, everything started to work fine. So it's good to not only consider the proximity of the accessories that you use the most and where they're placed in relation to your dock, but also that they're not inadvertently interfering with other accessories that you might lean on and thinking about their placement as well, especially if it's something that's relying on wireless communication. Secondly, if like me, you only ever really plan to use a controller in dock mode and that's the main peripheral that you use, you might still consider keeping a Bluetooth mouse nearby and connected to the deck wirelessly. That way, just in case you do hit a weird interface element where you have to interact with it, but you don't wanna to have to get up and walk over to your Steam Deck if it's across the room in your living room, for example, then you can quickly interact with it just using an external mouse as well. It doesn't have to be a top of the line gaming mouse or anything like that. You can pick any cheapo Bluetooth mouse from Amazon for the purpose. You can usually find these for like five or six bucks. And I keep one in my desk drawer just in case I ever need to just quickly interact with something that you know pops up in like a random launcher, or if I try to launch a game and it errors out and I can't, you know, select the okay dialogue using just the controller, definitely a handy thing to have nearby that long term tends to save a little bit of headache. And finally, just one quick recommendation within the realm of accessories for docked mode. I'm still a huge fan of 8 wireless line of controllers. They come in tons of different colors and configurations at that point, so you can really just pick one that suits your needs best. But yeah, it's one that I've used for about two years at this point, and honestly, I probably should have included it in that accessories video from a couple weeks ago where I talked about accessories that stood the test of time, but you know, hey, maybe next time. All right, so now that we've gone over physical considerations for the placement of your dock, things like cable management, and also how your accessories might play a role in your setup, let's go ahead and move on to talk about some specific optimizations that you can make whenever you actually wanna play games in docked mode. So one of the first things that I noticed shortly after getting my Steam Deck and poking around in dock mode configurations was that your experience in terms of how things look on screen can be a little bit dicey until you've made some configuration tweaks. Now typically the Steam Deck interface itself will look fine and automatically scale as needed, although if you have an output device that has like a non-standard resolution or whenever you look at the interface it looks a little bit blurry or not quite right, you may still need to dig into the settings of the Steam Deck itself and specifically address the resolution or maybe the frame rate depending on the refresh rate of your monitor. Monitor. And while technically speaking, the Steam Deck can do a 4K resolution output, realistically speaking, most games are not going to run well at that resolution, and even if you try it, it may look a little bit off or blurry until you do some tweaking. 
In portable mode, the Steam Deck has a resolution of 1280 by 800, which tons of games will support no problem, or if they don't, they'll at least support 720p, which also looks really good in portable mode. But in docked mode, especially if you're playing some big BP AAA title that has really taxing requirements for the GPU, you're very likely to have to do some tweaking here and there to make sure everything's going to look okay once you finally get it docked up. Now, it's not impossible to achieve or anything like that, and there's certainly a precedent for it thanks to the Nintendo Switch and how seamlessly it goes into docked mode, but where the Switch is very easy to just drop into the dock and go, the Steam Deck takes a little bit more tinkering to make sure that you get the best experience possible. And that's because with PC games rather than console games, you tend to have a lot more control over graphics options and video output modes, and just because you drop the Steam Deck into your dock, it doesn't mean it's automatically going to put out the best resolution and settings for your particular setup. Generally speaking, for the best experience in dock mode, you'll want to try to target 1080p wherever you can. However, I'm sure as eagle-eyed viewers have noticed on this channel, a lot of the time the footage that I've captured looks a little bit fuzzy, and that's because I tend to capture in lower resolutions to give a better idea of what it's actually going to look like when you're playing it in handheld mode. But the thing about docking your Steam Deck up is that it's not going to improve performance in any way, but in trying to hit that 1080p sweet spot, you're likely to find some performance troubles here and there depending on how taxing a game is, and you may find it best in some cases to just stick with a 720p resolution just in the interest of performance because obviously it's more taxing on the GPU to push more pixels and in turn the performance will suffer. And while 720p obviously isn't the best case scenario, sometimes in the interest of maintaining that performance it is better to go ahead and let the crispness of the image suffer a little bit in the interest of something like a higher frame rate. Now obviously I can't account for every single game and how it performs on the Steam Deck and every combination of settings for those games because that would be just millions and millions of combinations, but generally speaking I can at least point you in the direction of some place where I tend to go and that would be ProtonDB, which has tons and tons of games listed and specific sections for the Steam Deck for each, where user generated feedback will explain the best settings for particular titles depending on what you're targeting. And oftentimes this will also include helpful tips specifically for docked mode, which is hugely helpful, again, especially for those big AAA titles they usually require a little bit more configuration to get them looking the way you want. Now the other odd consideration for setting your resolution in dock mode is that in order to set the game that you're playing to a resolution at 1080p or above, First, you will have to go into its properties using the gear icon within the game interface, and then either select that resolution directly if it's you know 1080p, or you can set it to native rather than using the Steam Deck's default resolution of 1280 by 800 to have it try and automatically detect your external display's resolution. You can see here that I did this manually, selecting 1920 by 1080 at first for the game Remember Me, after I initially tried playing it in 720p. And initially, that's the highest resolution that was available to me until I made this change. However, after I backed out and then set it to run at native resolution, now you can see that the in-game resolution settings allow me to go up to 1080p, again, where initially I wasn't able to do that when it was set to a default setting. Now, I'd be lying if I said I had a perfect grasp of this process because honestly, it is kind of confusing. But regardless, using a combination of user-generated feedback from places like ProtonDB or Reddit, adjusting in-game settings and your resolution settings for each title, and finally just through some good old-fashioned experimentation, you will very likely find a sweet spot between resolution and visual performance. And ultimately, finding that Goldilocks sweet spot between resolution and visual fidelity is always going to be a little bit of a balancing act when it comes to the Steam Deck, and even though it's not an impossible task, it still would be nice if it were a little bit more seamless the way you get from the Nintendo Switch. Again, it's still doable, but it does take a little bit of extra work. Now beyond optimizing for visuals and resolution, I do have one weird little quirk when it comes to controllers in dock mode that I wanted to talk about for a second, and that is, for reasons unknown to me, occasionally and most typically with older titles I've found, sometimes you will fire up a game in dock mode and it just won't detect your controller input at all. And one of the first things that I always try to do to address this is to actually go into the controller settings for that game and then reorder the controllers. Just go into the controller settings, hit the reorder controllers button, and then switch the position of the Steam Deck controller and your X external controller. And again, I have no idea why this happens sometimes, but this is a fairly reliable fix and it's one of the first things that I try anytime it seems like a game just isn't detecting my controller's input for whatever reason. And I wouldn't call this a super common problem or anything, but I've encountered it enough that it's become pretty much a standard trick for me to go ahead and reorder the controllers anytime that I encounter it. And again, if you're playing in docked mode and you have your Steam Deck position far away from you where it's not within arm's reach, this can be a quick fix without you having to get up and physically go over to your Steam Deck. Again, assuming you don't have like a Bluetooth mouse or something 
something for quick on-screen modifications. At the end of the day, the Steam Deck shares enough DNA with its console brethren to provide a solid docked experience, and oftentimes more capably than the comparatively weaker Nintendo Switch. But the drawback of the extreme flexibility of the Steam Deck means that often the setup process to get dock mode working perfectly is admittedly a little bit more convoluted. Still, as long as you're careful about your placement, the accessories that you use, and can remember the nuance of video configuration settings for the Steam Deck, you should be able to do just fine. But hey, that's it for this video, and if you have any of your own tips and tricks for having a great dock mode experience, I would love to hear about it in the comments below. And now as far as videos coming up on the channel, soon I'll be taking a look back at some of the games that tragically I did not get to play in 2024, which is absolutely crushing for me for a few of those games. And then also I'll be doing a quick, fun little video about some interesting ways that you can use the collections functionality on your Steam Deck sometime in the next week or two, I'd say. So, as always, thank you so much for your time and hanging out here with me on the channel. I really, really appreciate it. Have a tremendous day, and I will see you on the next one.